So as I'm working with this, I'm basically working with a dynamic solve every time. So I have to basically go back to zero, and then I have to let it resolve every time. I can't really scrub the animation, but they have to basically solve every single frame uh, in order to know what the next frame is going to be. So at some point, I'm going to want to actually bake this out. So there's a very simple mechanism for doing this. So let's actually just set a few frames, maybe 75 frames here. And let's say I want to bake out 75 frames. Uh, under the MASH menu set, under Utilities, I've got a variety of tools that, that do different things, but one of them is the ability to bake instance objects. Now, a couple things to point out. When you're creating a MASH network, you have two methods. You have a mesh geometry type, and what that will do is all the dominoes would be created as a single mesh, uh, which may be useful. I could cache that out as a single mesh animation, or I can use the instancer, but that would basically create each individual domino as a separate object. And what that means is I can bake the animation out to the individual nodes themselves. So depending on how you create this originally, whether you create mesh or instancing is going to affect the way that you bake this. So if you happen to have created mesh originally, all you have to do is convert it. So there is a simple tool under mesh utilities called switch geometry type, and that will actually convert back and forth between a solid piece of geometry and instance individual nodes. So just be aware of that when you're doing uh, any kind of baking that you might need to change your geometry type depending on how you originally created the network. But right now I've actually got uh, an instance node. So you can see here I've got uh, an instancer which is basically driving all the individual dominoes. So I'm gonna set my frame one to 75 and we'll go to mash utilities and we'll bake this to objects. You can choose all your various transforms, translate, rotate, scale. You can either bake the frame or you can bake the animation, in which case it will basically run the simulation. It'll go frame by frame, calculating each transform along the way, and then ultimately it will convert that down to keyframes. So I only did a subset just for the time of the webinar. I didn't want to do the whole animation. Uh, but what you'll end up with is a group or a hierarchy that basically contains all of the, the MASH nodes. So here, if I unhide this, and I'll just quickly isolate select that. You can see I've got a baked animation that looks exactly like the bullet animation that I'd created previously. So now I can scrub this, I can retime this, I can go in and I can edit the underlying keys. So each one of these now has curves and keyframes that create that same exact animation. So let me actually go into a baked version of this that has the full time range and I'll show you a few different things. So here's an example that actually shows the full animation. If I play this back, you can see that um, it is indeed the same animation, except now the bullets have, bullet physics has been removed. Actually, MASH itself has been removed. All this is actually baked all the way through. So I'm going to do a little bit of retiming with this, but I want to point out one thing before I do. So I'm actually going to accelerate and decelerate uh, different parts of this animation. But there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. Anytime you do a bake of a physics simulation, then you'll oftentimes end up with Euler angle issues. So if I go to the graph editor, what you want to look for anytime you do a bake is these kind of spiky curves. So if you have a curve that basically pops, if I go back a, a couple of examples here, you can see I have these wide gaps between my curves. You can really see it here in the pool ball. Basically what that means is I have one frame that is in the positive. So like this frame, for example, is probably uh, 177, whereas this frame is something like negative 177. So it's a 360 degree swing or whatever that number happens to be. So what you want to do is basically do an Euler filter on these to get rid of those discrepancies. You can actually see it here if I grab all the curves. Oh, I see I'm in the wrong display mode. I hit, hit the one key to go into your absolute display. So there we go, you can see the spikes in the motion right there where the balls flip uh, 360 degrees positive to negative. So all I have to do is just grab all these keys and go to my curves and just say run an Euler filter and that will just basically clean up all the curves and it will remove any of those weird Euler angle offsets so that now I can reliably do some retiming because if I didn't do that first then the retiming would end up with uh, unexpected kind of un unintended results if I were to uh, scale uh, the time of the animation, for instance. 
All right, so let's play this back once more. Everything looks the same, hasn't really changed it otherwise. Uh, I'm gonna go into the time editor now, and what I wanna do is bring in the different parts of my animation. So I'm gonna take the, the dominoes, and I'll just go up to the hierarchy. So I'm grabbing the top node of this hierarchy, and I'm going to insert that into the time editor. So that will take all those animation curves, and it will put them into one clip. And then separately, I wanna go in and grab the pool ball, and I wanna put that into its own clip. So I'll create an animation track, I'll add the animation, and now I've got two different clips. So if I scrub through here, the animation looks the same, but if I grab this clip, you can see one clip controls the dominoes, and then the other clip controls the pool ball. So now I can go in and I can start to retime these in different ways. So let's actually go in here and let's say I want to uh, maybe accelerate the pool ball a little bit as it falls down and hits the domino. So what I'm gonna do is grab the clip that controls the pool ball. I'm gonna split that. And then I'm gonna kind of pull in here and go into scale mode. So I have different modes. I have scale, I have cycle, I have trim. I'm gonna go into my scale mode and I'm going to accelerate the ball. So now the ball is gonna come down faster. And then I'm gonna bring this forward. And then I might wanna just do a little bit of retiming on that as well. But the problem is now these may not match up anymore. So now the pool ball comes down and you can see it falls to the ground and then the domino effect happens. So now I need to go in and kind of shift the domino animation around. So right where the dominoes react, let's actually pull in a little bit closer so I can actually see this uh, a little more easily. So right where the ball falls, that's where I want the domino animation to kick in. So right in here is basically where I want it to happen. So the domino animation happens right there. I'm just gonna trim that off, maybe pull this forward, something like that, pull this forward. That's a little bit too early, so I might wanna snap it right there, but I wanna accelerate that as well. So I actually wanna have this move a little farther, and then right in here, I wanna accelerate that. So I wanna speed up this entire animation. I'm gonna take the timing of the domino effect and scale it way down so that after it does that initial kick, it's gonna speed up. So right there, it speeds up. I actually may even wanna do it a little bit more than that. So now I can speed that up, play this back. Now it's even faster, but then I might wanna tweak the, the pool ball as well. You can see the pool ball is actually running at a certain rate, you know, I might want to come in here and say, as the pool ball bounces right there, I want to maybe slow it down or speed it up. So I'll just do another trim there and then come in here and maybe accelerate the pool ball after it bounces a couple of times. And then ultimately I can take all this and I can just group it together. So now I've done this kind of various types of retiming. I'm going to group that all together. And now I have a single group that can now work at a higher level and I can accelerate or decelerate the whole thing or move it around in time. So I could take this entire group, move it around in time, or let's say I wanted to have the entire animation fit within exactly 120 frames. I can just scale the endpoint to 120 frames and then play this back. And now I've taken that entire animation, retimed it, and then fit it all within 120 frames. So that's the time editor in a nutshell, and then ultimately I could take all this and I can just bake it back out into the scene. So if I just take all this, I can right click and I can bake it and I can just say bake the scene and delete, and now it will remove all the time editor uh, edits, and then each individual domino will now have its own graph again. So each individual domino has the retimed animation curves as well as the pool ball has the retimed animation curves based on those kind of higher level edits that I made.